Hi, I'm Stathline Jazz, and welcome to this crash course in control charge and capability indices. So imagine you are the manufacturer of this here component or thing, which names eludes me. So if you know the name of this thing in English, uh, please let me know in the comment. That would be nice of you. Uh, and you measure the diameter with a caliber and you now have a lot of measurements and you wish to look at them, see how they perform, whether they're in control and so on and so forth. And that is what we're going to be discussing today. Let's get started. Let's start off by breaking down the control charts into the elements that we see here. So I have two separate control charts. I have an individual chart on the top and I have a moving range chart at the bottom. And I will be discussing both and also what they're good for in, in what situations. Uh, let's start, starting off with the top one. You can see I have specification limits and a target in blue. I have two red lines, which are my control limits. I have a green line, which is the mean of all the data that I have so far. Now I've hidden all the data so we can discuss about the, discuss these lines. So the space, upper and lower specification limits are the limits where if any items fall outside these, they will be considered scrap and cannot be sold to our customer. The blue line target is where I want my process to be. The green line is where the average of my process is. It's the mean of my process. The two red lines are my control limits. They can, be, they can be calculated in many different ways, but they are the area in which I would hope or assume that all my data points should fall within. In other words, if I have any data that falls outside the red lines, well, that means that that would be considered a out of control measurement, that something is wrong if that with that measurements. Now I can see that I'm quite happy here because my red lines are inside my blue lines, meaning that I would expect that most of my measurements to fall within with fall within specification. It would be very weird for me if I all of a sudden had an out of specification measurement. Although I am not on target, I am fairly close to target. Now that we also have all the data, we can see that some of these points actually do fall outside our control charts. But I would say not to worry because we're still quite far from the specification limit. And that is something that's important to, to, to discuss internally. Like, do we want to react when we're outside of control? Yes or no, because I'm, at, I'm still within spec, so maybe there's a better time to, to uh, how to spend my time. Um, one th cool thing you can do if you right click, you go to points, now you go to limits, and then you say shade zones. You get a green area, which is one standard deviation from your mean. You get a yellow area, which is two standard deviations from the mean, and you get a red area, which would be measurements that fall outside three standard deviations of your mean. And those are the ones that we say are weird. Now beneath here, you have the moving range. And what this literally is, is just the distance between two neighboring points in your control chart or in your, in your data table. So let's say that one there, you see that point we have here, which is row 25, it was positioned there and row 26 was positioned there. So there are two neighboring points, but even though they're both within the control limits, they are very far from each other and therefore they show up as out of control in my moving range chat. So sometimes it's, it's like we don't want to have these sudden, very big shifts, and we won't be able to find this particular one if we weren't also looking at our moving range chart. So maybe we should be worrying about that big shift there. We have another big shift here from row 115 to 116, um, and it's just a great way of saying, okay, these ones is where we've seen sudden shifts in our production. We then can open the uh, this limit summaries and look that we have a lower control limit of 3.5 and our upper control limit of 5.13. These are calculated, uh, but we can choose our own control limits if you wish so wish. There's different ways we could approach that. I'm not gonna discuss that in this video, uh, but here you can find what Jump have calculated them to be. I can then open my process capability analysis and I can see I have a whole lot of numbers. So. What I'm really interested in is, let's say that I have 200 different of these things and I measure all of them. I measure all their their, um, their diameters and so on and so forth. And I don't wanna be sitting and looking at 200 different control charts. So I need a method to weed out the ones that are fine that I don't need to worry about and find the ones that I do need to worry about so I can focus my time on those. 
so we you can use the the uh, these capability indices for that because they're an indication of how well our process is running uh, compared to our specification window so really it's just a way of looking at the width of our process being the control limits and compare that to the width of our specification window to illustrate this we're going to be looking at the width of a car and compare that to the width of your garage so the width of the car is the width of the process so the upper and lower control limit and the width of uh, the garage being the upper and lower specification limit so we're going to be looking at three different capability indices and the first one we're going to be discussing is called pp so or cp so pp equals the upper specification limit minus the lower specification limit and that divided by the car or the process I'm just going to put p so what is that well that is your garage divided by car so what would that give us is the number of how many times we can park our car inside the garage now and that's a good number but what this number doesn't tell us that it, it looks like that number will be three in my case here but it doesn't tell us whether we accidentally parked on top of the garage or far from the garage because it only specifies how the like the width of your process compared to the width of the window so the next thing we need to understand is, well, it's called PPK, PPK or CPK. And that is the width of, let's say, no, it's the mean of your process to the nearest limit, whether that will be the upper or the lower limit. So let's put in the car. So if that car was, was parked there, that would be the distance from the mean of the, the process or the car, which would be, let's put that in there. That's not a very good approximation of the mean. Let's do better. There we go. So it's the mean of this line to the specification limit or the garage divided by half a car or half the process width, half P or half car. But the problem with that number is that if I have a very, very wide process window and a very, very little car, I can be very far from the target. So let's put in the target here. And I really want to park in the middle of my garage. So, and PPK isn't, is, is still in the telling me that. So I could be producing, well, inside spec, but I'm quite far from target. And there's an equation telling us that the, the person who made this um, six or this concept saying, well, we actually want to be on target because on target is where it was designed to be. That's where it's, it fits the best. Um, so this is not good either. We want to be close to the target. So we need a third number and that number is called PK. The coloring PK. And that is calculated by the distance from the mean of the car or the mean of the process to the target. I'm writing with my mouse. It's very beautiful. And we divide that by half a car or half a process. So with these three numbers, if we look at these that those three numbers will give us a really good indication of how this process is running without having to look at the visualization and this will help us define which of our many processes we need to focus on all right thanks for watching this quality control chart is a big topic so if you want me to make more videos on this topic you need to let me know in the comments uh, but thanks for watching if you liked it give it a like remember to subscribe and uh, catch you in the next one bye